So now I want to go over a definite integral example containing trig functions. So here we have the integral with a lower limit of 0 and a upper limit of pi of the cosine of x minus the sine of x dx. And before we integrate this problem, I want you to take a look at this table that I wrote for you on the left. And I wrote for you, if you have a trig function before you integrate, I also wrote for you on the right-hand side of the table what the trig function is going to look like after you integrate it. And I wrote for you all the, the common trig functions and E functions and also uh, natural log functions. Uh, you need to have these memorized before you can get uh, started with this problem. So let's just dig right into this example. Here we have the integral of the cosine of x minus the sine of x. And once again, look at our table on the left. Look at line number one. Um, if we have the cosine of x before we integrate, um, after we integrate, it's going to become the sine of x. Um, so once again, our first term that we have in our integral is the cosine of x. So if we integrate that, it's going to become the sine of x minus the integral of the sine of x. And once again, we'll look at our table, line number two of our table. If we have the integral of the sine of x, after you integrate it, it's going to become the negative cosine of x. So I'm going to integrate the sine of x and put the negative cosine of x. And this is a definite integral. So instead of putting a plus c like we would for an indefinite integral, I'm just going to make a line and put my upper limit at the top and put my lower limit at the bottom. Now I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. We have the sine of x and then we have two negatives. We know that two negatives become a positive. And once again, I'm going to draw my line with my lower limit of 0 and the upper limit of pi. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my upper limit, which is pi, everywhere there is an x. Um, so instead of writing the sine of x, I'm going to put the sine of pi plus the, instead of writing the cosine of x, I'm going to put the cosine of pi. And then I'm going to put a parentheses around everything. And my next step is I'm going to subtract my lower limit. So I'm going to plug my lower limit everywhere there's an x. So instead of writing the sine of x, I'm going to put the sine of 0 plus the cosine of x. So instead of writing the cosine of x, I'm going to put the cosine of 0. And I'm going to put a parentheses around everything. And now we've taken this definite integral. The only thing you have to do is just simplify this as much as possible. So now you're going to have to remember all these trig values, or you're going to have to use your calculator. Um, so if you are using your calculator, make sure it's in radians. The sine of pi, if you remember, is just 0. Plus the cosine of pi is negative 1. Minus the sine of 0, which is just 0. Plus the cosine of 0, which is just 1. In our first parentheses, we just have a 0 plus negative 1, which is just negative 1. And in our second parentheses, we have a 0 plus 1, which is just positive 1. And of course, negative 1 minus 1 will give us a negative 2. And this is our final answer. So here are some more videos with some more example problems related to the video you just watched. I really hope you're finding my tutorials helpful. So until my next video, I will see you later.